Well, we were talking earlier about Capitec reporting results this morning. Stephen Manchies, who is head of research at Imara SP Reed, with me now at the desk to talk about uh, Capitec, but also the unsecured uh, lending sector generally. Morning to you, Stephen. Good to have you in the studio yes, good again. Morning, David. I don't know if you have got a particular view on Capitec uh, before we move on to the broader. Uh, sector but what we have said already this morning is that it reminds us how different it is from African Bank transactional uh, lending is very important to it and it looks like increased importance as the secured lending area becomes more difficult well absolutely and of course they have been very careful in the granting of credit um, what is heartening is that the impairment situation I mean it's still difficult still tricky but it's uh, not out of control I mean, the total impairments rose 6%, and that was the increase in the, the advances outstanding. So, and, and the, compared to the past, um, it's, it's, there's no really serious deterioration. It's still tricky, and uh, obviously they reduced the number of loans, and uh, they're not about to expand that the lending side very rapidly for the time being. If you didn't know that uh, the unsecured lending sector was difficult, this company's results, you'd say, well done, good set of results. Well, absolutely. I mean, uh, earnings and dividends uh, per share up 21% year on mm. year. That's very satisfactory. Looking at the prospects column, it's, it's very cautious. It just says they're going to you know, stick to the knitting, do their job. Uh, it doesn't offer any, any talk about uh, continued earnings growth. Uh, my f sense is it, there will be earnings growth, but perhaps not at the, uh, it, it's, it'll probably temper mm. off a little bit. Well, let's look at the broader unsecured lending area. Uh, we've got uh, Capitec, we've talked about, but they're a mixed model. African Bank, of course, the good bank, bad bank, more announcement there. And then last week, and I see there's another report here in the paper, Bridge, an unsecured lender going for business rescue. So we talk about these big listed banks. How big is the unsecured sector and how really stressed is it? In other words, are there things lurking there that we haven't heard about yet? Well... The, the bridge story is, is, is funding drying up. It doesn't, uh, the, story, the reports don't tell us that there was any significant deterioration in their collections or anything, so we don't know. Um, but, I mean, that's the stark difference between Capitec and, let's say, bridge. I mean, Capitec's deposits increased, and they, for uh, yet another period, they did not have to go to the wholesale market for further funding. Mm. So I think that's the bridge situation. Um, and uh, overall, and secure lending, of course, is a, a small part of overall debt in, in, in the country. Mm. Um, what, what sort of percentage is it roughly? 10, well, 5, uh, 20? I would have said uh, south of 10. Yeah. yeah. Yes. yes. And uh, that the, the, the predicament of consumers is not about to change quickly. The economic situation has to turn for the better. Having said that, of course, there's still millions of people in jobs and uh, they do pay, uh, and who do pay off their loans and from time to time become ready to borrow again and mm. are completely credit worthy. So, you know, unsecured lending will continue. It's not going to stop altogether. Mm. But for uh, the, bro the broader picture to improve, we, we need the economy to turn around. How are the regulators going to approach this? Uh, there was a big intervention in the case of African Bank. They don't want to have to do that too often. Mm. Uh, do you sense that there's uh, tighter regulation coming? Uh, that seems to be very much the case. Uh, and Capitec, in fact, mentioned that they've been very proactive in this. And they said that what they had asked for and apparently has been implemented is that all credit providers have to provide details of loans granted within 48 hours. Uh, because uh, I think every, every, every provider of credit needs to know that, you know, Joe Soap uh, has been next door and got a loan and now he's coming for another one. They, they, that's vital information. Mm. So the th steps like that need to be taken. We talked about Bridge and uh, the financial officer who was in last week talking about essentially the, the, the people they borrow from, they're not getting the money that they used to. An African bank basically borrowed money to lend money and yes. then uh, it pays it back by the, the interest it charges. The so-called good bank and bad bank, I mean, it sounds great. Ah, oh, now we've got a good bank, so that'll be, uh, all will be okay. It still requires the confidence of lenders. So there's quite a lot of work to do still there. Well, that's absolutely right. Um, uh, it's going to be very interesting to see to what extent the Reserve Bank collects on the, I think, a 17 billion book that they took over and for which they paid 10 billion. They might even make a profit on that. Mm. Um, but uh, as far as the good bank is concerned, it really is a case of uh, how it's dressed up when it comes back to market and uh, I think uh, I get the sense that uh, the big the big banks supporting it 
are actually quite optimistic that it'll look good and we'll, we'll, they'll be able to float it quite successfully. How do you think about this as an, from an investment point of view? Well, we're obviously, we look at it at the time. You're talking about whether one would uh, recommend investment mm. in, in the good bank. You know, I think um, once bitten, twice shy will apply to a lot of former able investors. So um, it certainly won't be for the faint-hearted. It will have to be and have a lot of backing and guarantees from you know, all, all the people participating in the resuscitation of it. And Capitec, uh, is that uh, overvalued? I don't think so. It's, it, the share price has had quite a good run uh, uh, following the trading update. and uh, So I think it's, it may be fairly valued at the moment, but uh, certainly by no means hectically overvalued. Thanks to Stephen Manchies uh, for that overview of the unsecured uh, lending space. Head of research at Imara, S.P. Reid.